Inspiration can strike at any time, and using the tools included in Sonar X1 Producer, we can quickly and easily make what is imagined become sonic reality. Inspiration struck for me in the form of an audio sample from a cartoon. An electronic brain is dope! Once I heard that, I was on my way to making a piece of music. So the first thing that I want to do is drag this audio sample into the matrix. But there's first a few tweaks I want to make to the matrix settings before I start. First I want to go to my matrix options, and I want to make sure that I check import all audio as groove clips. This will make sure that any audio loops that I pull into the matrix will automatically conform to the tempo that we have for the project, which in this case is 145 beats per minute. Next I'm going to adjust the trigger resolution A from measures to beats. This means now that anything that's triggered with the A trigger setting will be triggered on the next upcoming beat. And B I'm going to leave for immediate. So anything marked as B, which you'll see in a minute, will be immediately triggered. I'm going to grab my sample now from the browser and drag that to the first cell in the matrix. I want to right click on here and make this a one shot trigger so it only plays once. And I'm going to click on the A and change that to B so it's immediately triggered. An electronic brain is dope! With the sample in place, now I can start building up my tracks to make the rest of the music. For my first instrument, I'm going to go into my browser and drag one of my track templates that I've made and saved right into my project. Track templates are a great way to be able to quickly access your favorite sounds and settings into any project. And for this one, I'm using Cakewalk Sound Center. Cakewalk Sound Center is a fun tool to use because you can look through for types of instruments, subtypes, and the different programs. For this one, I've got a sound called Vertical Specimen from Dimension Pro, and it's added some extra delay to it. Looking at the MIDI tab of this track in the inspector, you can see I've also got auto input quantize set for this track for recording. I've got my input quantize set to whole notes, and now this will quantize as I'm recording the input. And these settings are saved in the track template. To save a track in all its settings as a track template, right click on the track and select Save as Track Template. With my track template loaded and armed to record, I'm going to lay down an 8 bar chord progression. Now that I've recorded my part, what I'd like to do is drag my clip out to the full 8 bars, and then I'm going to right click and make this a groove clip. Now I can take this and drag it to a cell in the matrix where it will be triggered off. Alright, now that we've got our piano in there, let's put some drums in. I've got a track template that I've made using a kit from Session Drummer 3, and I'm going to open up the step sequencer by accessing it from the icon at the top of the window. And we'll go ahead and close Session Drummer 3, and I want to make this an 8 beat pattern, so I'm going to change the beats to 8. And we can scroll down to the bottom, and we're going to use the handy Fill Every feature by right clicking, and on the kick drum, I'm going to say Fill Every 4. Now on our snare, I'm going to fill that in every six. Then I've got this rolled snare sound that I'd like to fill in every three. Now for convenience, I'm going to go in and change the note number value to 51, which is the note number for the ride symbol. And I'm going to right click and fill this in every four. Now we have this pattern. So now we'll go back to our matrix view. And I can take my step sequencer pattern that I just wrote and drag it to its own cell in the matrix. I want the piano part to carry on on top of the drums, so I'm going to select it, hold down control, and drag it to the next column. Now these will fire off together.
Now here's where the fun really starts. What I'm going to do now is start auditioning loops on top of what we've done. So I'm going to go into my browser and into my audio folder where I have different loops and beats and things. So what I want to do is I want to start having this play. Then I'm going to start auditioning loops in my browser. Now that I've found some loops that I want to work with, I'd like to duplicate this column with the piano and the drums over so that I can accommodate these new loops. So I'm going to right click and hit duplicate column. Now I've got three loops that I'd like to add, so I'm going to duplicate this three times. Now what I can do is grab these different loops and I can take them to their respective columns. And now we have the combination of the audio loops, the MIDI groove from Session Drummer 3, and the piano from Cakewalk Sound Center. Now I've also got some reggae breakbeats that I'd like to throw in on top of the piano. So what I'm going to do is just copy the piano over four more times by holding down control, selecting, and dragging over. And now I'm going to throw these reggae breakbeats on. Going back up to my track templates, I wrote a track template called Dub Track. In this channel, I've got the VX64 vocal processor inserted. What I wanted to do was give the sample a little bit more space, so I added some stereo doubler and some tempo syncable delay set to quarter notes. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here to my matrix row and I'm going to change that to the Dub Track. Now, when we run the sample, an electronic brain is dope, 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 is dope. We've given a little bit of spice to it. Now, an added cool thing is I've got the reggae break beats going through this, so now I've got a dub style delay to go along with those reggae break beats. Now that we have all these set up, I've got a couple more beats that I want to throw in. So I'm going to take the piano and copy that over two more times. Now I'm going to go back to the browser and into my audio folder, and I'm going to drag these last two beats in here. I'm going to go back up into my browser and drag in a track template that I've got set up for the tom loops and for the last two beats that I just put in. In this track template I'm using the PC 4K bus compressor from the Pro Channel to get a handle on the different volumes of loops that I'm going to be putting through it. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to assign those to go through tom loops. Now that I have all my cells populated, I'd like to start learning these cells and rows to different keys and pads on my MIDI controller to be triggered from. I can do this by right-clicking on a cell or at the top of a column and selecting MIDI Learn. Then I can hit a corresponding pad or key on my keyboard and then I can trigger the sample from the pad. An electronic brain is dope, 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 is dope. Now I've already gone through and learned all of my cells and rows to keys and pads on my MIDI controller. So now I want to capture a matrix performance. So what I'm going to do is hit Capture Matrix Performance 
and follow transport. I'm going to select the first column that I'd like to play. Then when I hit play on my transport, this column will start playing. Another thing that I like to do is insert an empty MIDI track, and I'm going to call this MIDI Mute. Now I can select this and make sure that I'm not triggering off any of my soft synths or the drums while I'm playing in the matrix. Now I also want to make sure that the cell MIDI trigger enable is engaged so that it will receive signals from my MIDI controller. Now let's go ahead and hit play on the transport and record a matrix performance. And you'll see on the timeline above, all the parts start to play out. Next what I'd like to do is I'd like to add in a live synth solo on top of all this. And that's one of the nice things about capturing a matrix performance is because you have the ability to create on the fly and play the clips inside the matrix as if they were an instrument. Afterwards, you can start to lay in live instruments and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a track template that I've made with a synth sound from Dimension Pro. Now this synth sound on its own is called Extreme Lead. But what I wanted to do was spice it up a little bit more, so I went to the Pro Channel and I added some compression, some EQ in the highs, and a very healthy dose of the tube saturation. Now I have the routing for these modules set up so that the tube saturation goes into the compression and then into the EQ. I'll go ahead and play you a little bit of the sound as it was without the Pro Channel. So we'll turn all these modules off, and I'll play you a little bit. Not as extreme as I'd like it to be. So now let's go ahead and turn on the components of the Pro Channel, the compression, EQ, and tube saturation, and hear what we've got now. Much more extreme, I'd say. Alright, so now I want to go ahead and record a little bit of a lead using this sound. So we'll go ahead and close out Dimension Pro. I want to deactivate this cell and turn off the follow transport. And I'm also going to turn off the cell MIDI trigger enable. That way I can make sure I'm not triggering anything in the matrix when I'm playing my synth solo. So let's go ahead and arm the track for record. And we'll find a suitable place to start. Now that I've found a place that I want to drop in on, Let's go ahead and lay down a solo on this.
The last thing I want to do for the music is record a guitar part on top of all this. So I'm going to drag in a track template that I've put together that includes Native Instruments Guitar Rig, which is included in Sonar X1. Guitar Rig offers a great sounding collection of amps, mics, and effects. And in this case, I've got my Twang Reverb Amp, which is sort of like a Fender. And I've also got some chorus and flanger added to it for a nice warbly tone. I was playing around with Guitar Rig one night and came up with this sound and I thought, you know what, I really want to save this so that I can use it sometime. And this is what I've got for it. So we'll go ahead and close this out and I'm going to arm this to record. Let's find a suitable place to drop in and then we'll record some guitar on here. This looks like a good spot. So now it's time to record some guitar. With all of our elements in place, including the performance from the Matrix, the synth solo, and now the live guitar part, it's time to get the piece ready to be delivered to a mastering house. So what I'm going to do is go to the console tab in my multi-dock, double click to expand, and I want to go to the master section here, and I'm going to use the bus compression from the PC4K bus compressor built into the Pro Channel. I'm going to go to my presets button here, and I want to choose the master bus compression heavy preset and I'm going to make some adjustments to the threshold and the ratio so I can get the best results for the source material. Mm -hmm. 